you know, if you, if you really want to be successful, the really successful investors, they picked something, they committed to it, and they stayed with it, and they're unshakable in their conviction because the world will generate 10,000 anxiety-inducing headlines over the course of the next 10 years. And every one of them will be calculated to get your attention by creating maximum anxiety. And there's only one mistake you can make, which is to sell. That's the one mistake. And then everybody in the universe is going to try to get you to sell because if they don't create anxiety, right? Inflammation or, or enragement is engagement, right? If they don't create the anxiety, you won't read the story. It's clickbait. You know, sometimes people post stories about me on YouTube and they say, Michael Saylor said he'll sell his Bitcoin when this happens. And I go, whoa. And then I want to click on it. And I'm like, wait a minute, I am Michael Saylor. And I know I'm not selling my Bitcoin. They still got me to click on it. It's that good. The, in, the media is, is engaged in getting you to react. And there's only one mistake when you've made the right decision. When, you, when you've, your life is set, you've got the perfect house and the perfect family and the perfect assets and the perfect property. The only mistake is get panicked out of your position. So don't panic. Michael Saylor, ever since his infamous decision to convert his company's entire balance sheet into Bitcoin, has had an unshakable faith in his investment. In his latest interview, Michael Saylor reflects on the recent crashing of crypto prices and answers the question, are we in a bear market? I think we're in a consolidating plateau. And uh, it's a, it's, uh, I think it's a pretty good plateau because there's all these, there are all these conventional mainstream investors and uh, they've been watching Bitcoin. And when Bitcoin was going up too fast, when it was running parabolic, they're afraid to, uh, to buy in. But right now, sitting in a plateau where they, you know, they're a lot more likely to buy it, by the way, if the return looks more to the NASDAQ and the return was 5x the NASDAQ. We got some really great news this week. Uh, Miller came out and he announced that half of his personal net worth, half of his personal portfolio is invested in Bitcoin. And he, you know, he said the other half is like an Amazon. He's held Amazon for 25 years or whatever. And, you know, Amazon is famously volatile. It went through lots and lots of 80% downs and a 90% drawdown. down. And he's just been sitting forever. He's like a classic hodler. And Amazon's big tech. In essence, what he said was, I own digital gold and I own a big tech retailer and I'm, and that's half and half. Now, he had a year ago, he said, I have some, but he never said 50%. Yeah. Now you've got all the other mainstream investors that have some gold exposure, you know, the Paul Tudor Jones and the Stanley Druckenmillers and the Ray Dalios and the, you know, fill in the blank. And they're all starting to wake up to this. And when they see Bill Miller, who's a, you know, runs multiple billions of dollars and is a billionaire in his own right saying saying this is the only thing i can find that can go up by a factor of 10 to 50 that um that also is a is a store of value asset right then then they start to pay attention now if bitcoin was trading at an all-time high and it was like on fire they'd be afraid but you kind of like the idea that Bitcoin is 40% off the all-time high and it's catching its breath and you think maybe this is an entry point and in fact I've seen lots of high net worth individuals and family offices that they're just now starting to do an allocation to Bitcoin like maybe we should allocate 5% or we should allocate two and a half percent you know and uh, you know February they would have been or March or April or May they'd be afraid and and now it, it you know they're through a lot of the risk you know the china crackdown de-risked the situation <clears throat> the um the consolidations de-risked the, uh, the situation every single publicly traded miner every every miner that comes public de-risks the situation uh all the political uh the regulatory clarity is de-risking the situation and so i I don't think we're in a bear market. I think uh, I think Bitcoin is it, it's moving um, through this phase uh, where it you know it moved from 
4,000 to 40,000 with volatility and it's going to move from 4,000 to 500,000. I mean, the next plateau is the gold plateau, right? To basically digital gold replaces gold and flips gold. And that's like a $5,000, $500,000 number, I think. And then, um, and then, the, then after that, it's really just a property index or a monetary index, which should be 10x that. So, you know, what I see is uh, is uh, a move from where we are to 500,000 over three, four, five years, and then a move over the following three to five years. You know, it could take could take 10 years, but uh, but a move in the next the next epic from the 500,000 to 5 million dollar range because ultimately people say well, what is what is bitcoin well bitcoin is the apex proper of the human race it's the only property you can truly own so the question is who wants it well everybody in the world with weaker property so what is weaker property well how about like a second house in africa <laughs> Like, how about land in the middle of, of, of Africa or Asia or, or South America? How about a building? And fill in the blank. Would you rather own a building in, in Venezuela or Argentina? How about a ranch in Colombia? Like everywhere in the world where you have excess money and you want to invest in property, <clears throat> the problem with investing in a currency derivative is the currencies are collapsing right in there they're collapsing at 10 15 percent a year in the western world but they're collapsing at 40 percent 50 60 percent a year in the developing world so so bonds they're weak property uh real estate is weak property because you've got a politician that can do you know they're going to tax it and they can take it away from you and you can't move it if you need to leave and you can only rent it to people in the country so and then equities are weak property because uh, because the CEO controls that equity, they control. It's a security, and if you own securities, the bank the bank controls it. Let, let's say you own a security. You live in Zimbabwe. Well, the government of Zimbabwe can take it away from you. Try buying it at J.P. Morgan. They can take it away from you. The CEO can print more equity, and they can take it away from you. Uh, a random government, you know, in Australia can put a fine on a Google and they can take it away from you a union can unionize right so if you're holding if you're holding securities you've got lots of risk if you're holding real estate you've got lots of risk if you're holding gold well the bankers can print more gold paper and the gold miners can mine more gold and try to move through an airport with ten million dollars of gold or try to move through an airport with ten thousand dollars of gold Try to move through an airport with a thousand dollars of gold. I tried to move through an airport with a, a a pen knife that Amazon sold me, and it was labeled as TSA friendly. I couldn't get a knife that's like a, a quarter inch or half inch blade through a metal detector in an airport. So your property is all weak, all of it. And so how much is weak? Hundreds of trillions of dollars of weak property. So ultimately, I think that there are 8 billion people on the planet, or there shortly will be 8 billion people on the planet, and they're all going to want uh, some amount of digital property instead of like that second Airbnb or that investment property or, or that equity. I even, by the way, you know, I even did a little survey on Twitter where, where um, Cash App let you... Um, they let you decide whether or not you wanted to give someone the gift of a stock or the gift of Bitcoin or the gift of cash for Christmas. And uh, I actually put in a survey, I said, what do you want to give away? Uh, you know, cash, stock, you know, equity or Bitcoin. It's like, you know, 93% Bitcoin, 7% stock. Like there, that is to say, everybody intuitively understands that equity or securities are risky and that and that Bitcoin is property. And so it's like a 20 to one, 10, 10 to one or 20 preference if they if they need to own something. So there's Michael Saylor on how he thinks Bitcoin gets to $500,000 within five years and $5 million over the next.